What's up, y'all? This is JB from Music Boy Productions, and today I'm very excited because we're taking a drum sound and we're going to transform the way that drum sounds by only using Logic's stock channel EQ. All right, here's before. And here's after. Mm. So much more clear, so much more precise. All right, let's dive straight in. Okay, so first things first, please subscribe to my channel. And if you're getting any type of value from this content, like and comment below. Okay, so you've heard the drums dry and you've heard the drums with the EQs on them. So now I would like to take you through the process of how I think in general. Hmm. Most times when I'm done all of my preliminaries within a mix, which is like fixing all the problems, editing all the drums, getting everything situated, I do levels and I'm make all my pan moves, everything I want to the left and to the right. And then I deal with the overall mix on the stereo bus. And if I feel like the mix needs to be brighter or duller, I'll deal with that at the overall level before going to the individual channels. And I'm saying all this to say that while I'm dealing with this drum set, I first start off with the drum bus. Mix tip, always put your drums in a bus so you can process them all together. We're here to look at this Logic Stock Channel EQ plugin on these drums. So I want to show you the moves that we made on the drum bus so you can hear why we made these moves. Very quickly, I added a little bit of low in here. I took out some 308. I took out some 432. I added a little bit of 3K and I added a little bit of 7K. Let's start off with my boost at 44 hertz. Here we go. So that's about 3 dB at 44 hertz. Just to add a little bit more oomph, I'm a bass player. I like to hear low end and I like to hear it strong. We're gonna put more low end in these drums so I give the overall drums a little bit more low end. When I'm EQing in general, I like to do subtractive EQ first to take out things that I don't want. And so let's listen to 308 hertz so you can hear what I was thinking when I took these two cuts out here. A very woofy type sound that I didn't like, so I took that out by around 5 dB. Let's listen to 432 hertz. A very woofy type sound that I didn't like as well. So these are why these cuts are here. Let's listen to the drums without them both. You can really hear that woof woof. Woof woof woof. Taking it back out. Just those two cuts alone really shape the sound of the drums a little bit better for me. And it takes out things that I don't want to hear. So there's subtractive EQ. And uh, we're going to do some more additive EQ here. At around 3K, I like the way it made my drums sound a little bit more intelligent. It added a little bit more click to the kick drum. It added a little bit more pop to the snare. It added a little bit more hi-hat and a little bit more uh, just intelligibility over the overall drum and the overheads. So let's listen to this. I'm going to turn it up some so you can hear it a little bit more. I'm going to take it out. Adding it back. And it really makes a difference in that hi-hat as well. At 7K, I wanted to add some sheen to the overall drums, a little bit more brightness to the overall drums. And normally if I want overall brightness, I could. I used to do it on the overheads. But as I've mixed over the years, I've learned that I can really get this done with only the bus of the instrument that I want to make brighter. So in this case, 
That's what I did. I did all my brightness on the drum bus. Okay, now let's listen to the drums with the EQ. Here we go. Out. Back in. Just this one instance alone really does a lot for me as far as like shaping the overall drum. Does a lot of the hard work and that's why I like to deal with the overall first. Okay, so after shaping the overall drums, I'm moving along to now the individual channels of the drums or the individual elements of the drums. We're gonna move to the kick drum and we're gonna look at these four moves I made with the EQ. I made two boosts and two cuts. Let's listen to the kick drum without any EQ. I'm gonna turn the EQ on and listen to it again. Here we go. Off. On. Right away, you can see about 12 dB taken out of the low mid range. And that's because I did not like the sounds of these two frequencies. So I'm gonna take these boosts off for a second and let's just only listen to these low mid changes I made to the kick drum. So this is what the first cut sounds like. This is at 179 hertz. Here, let's listen. That does a lot. Let's listen to 302. This is a very wide cue because I didn't want any of this <laughs> in my kick drum. And as you can see, it really helped shape the kick drum a little bit. So in general, I like to add a little click in the kick. So this is why I added this 4K boost at about 5 dB, about 4.4K. Um, let's listen to that. I'm gonna take it out. All right, now I'm gonna add my last boost, which is at 56 hertz. And this is about 5 dB as well. Let's listen to this. Mind you, on the overall drum bus, we had added a little bit of 44, so I'm not adding a lot, about 3 dB of that. I'm adding about 5 dB at 56 to just give it a little bit more oomph. A little bit more definition in that bottom. All right, let's listen one more time in the context of everything. Man, just that EQ transformed this whole kick sound. All right, let's move on to the snare. Actually, this is a bus within itself. I have a top and a bottom snare. And the only thing I have on these two is a gain knob. And this is just for phasing well, along with the overheads, but this is another YouTube that we'll talk about that in. So I'm gonna close this because I'm not using that. We're gonna go to the snare EQ and I'm gonna turn on the EQ so we can hear the differences it made. Here we go. Here's the snare by itself. This is top and bottom snare together. So I love what we did here. We took our low cut and we cut up until about 100. And we added a little bit of 200 here for a little bit of bottom end. We took out 498 hertz, about 500. And we added some pop to the snare around 5K. I'm gonna leave this here because I don't need anything lower than 100 in my snare at all. All right, so let's listen to this 6 dB at about 200K. Here, let's listen. 
I'm gonna take it out. It's a little weak to me, and I, I want it to feel a little bit more beefy and. Yeah, I just wanted to feel a little bit more, a little bit more definition in that snare. And I just took out a little bit of 500 here, um, only because I wanted to clear up the snare a little bit. Let's listen to this frequency. And it's very boxy, and I don't, I don't want boxy snare. And I'm making these moves because to me, in my ears, it's making the drum sound a little bit more round. And I like round drums. Let's listen to this 5K boost. I'm going to take it out and I'll boost it a lot so you can hear what that frequency sounds like. Here we go. Mind you, on our overall drum bus, remember we added that 3K boost and we had that 7K boost. So we don't have to do much here. We have about 4 dB of 5K. I added it because I just wanted a little bit more pop. I'm taking it away again and I'm going to add the rest of the drum so you can hear how it sounds with everything. Okay, all together with all the drums. I'm going to take the snare EQ away. It's a, little, it's a little weak. It's a little weak right now. Let's give it some more body. Yeah, I like that. I like the way that sounds. So let's move along to the toms. Again, I'm processing two toms. And again, I have a gain knob for phasing issues. In this, we only made two moves, a low cut at about 80 hertz, and then we took out some 650, which is general mid-range, and we added a little bit of click to the overall high of both of the times. And sometimes, I like to start off my time bus first to see if I can get the sound I'm looking for without going into the individuals, and for this track, I didn't need to touch the individual tracks. I just hit the time bus with a little bit of subtractive EQ and a little bit of top end because I already had enough bottom. So let's listen to what I'm talking about. Here we go. The times by themselves. One more time. I'm going to add the EQ. So to me, as I'm listening now, I could even widen this EQ some more and get a little bit more of that out. Let me try that. Better. All right, so that rounds out the drum for me a little bit. I'm gonna play the 5K boost at 9 dB with and without the 5K boost. A little dull, right? Without. I just wanted to add a little bit more intelligibility to the times. Hope you're enjoying this. If you're getting any value from this content, please like and subscribe to my channel. It's completely free. It doesn't cost you anything to do, and it really helped me out. Um, let's move on to the hi-hats. The only thing I did to these hi-hats is cut all the way up until 540 hertz. Let's listen to the hi-hats by themselves, nothing on them. Great sound in hi-hats. Great sound in hi-hats. Now let's listen to the cut up until 540 hertz. Without. So this hi-hat track is going all the way up to 60 hertz. I don't need any of that. Look at this. Look at this analyzer right here. All right, so we're moving on to the overheads. The last element of this particular drum set is the overheads. Let's listen to the overheads with nothing on them solo. Here we go. All right, adding the EQ now. All right, taking it back out. So for me on the overheads, I wanted to still keep the overall drum set in my overheads. And this cut at 376 hertz took out a lot of room noise. You 
you hear how the snare kind of gets really roomy I feel like around that mid-range area it really helps with the room and sounding closer and of course it thins it out because these are cymbals I don't really need too much thickness but I like that cut because it thins things out and I still have some beefy snare here and some beefy kick so I don't really need that to be that strong in my overheads okay we have another cut let's listen to this 5.5 K cut that we took out it's not a bad frequency but I took some out so I could really be able to let the 7k to 8k shine now let's listen to this without and then I'll add it in Let's listen to the overheads along with the drums without, and then I'm going to put it in as we listen. Out again. Back in. We've made it to the end of this tutorial. And we're going to listen one more time without any instance of the EQ just to hear how we transform these drums in such a short period of time. So let's turn it off and then we'll turn it back on in a second. Here we go. One, two, on. Off, mm. on. So I don't know what you're hearing, but I'm hearing a lot more clarity in the drums. I'm hearing closer drums. I'm hearing beefier drums, bigger drums. I just like the overall preciseness of what this EQ plugin can do. So for those of you who don't have a bunch of third-party plugins, this demonstration is for you to show you that you can really do a lot with just, just stock plugins within your DAW. So until next time, y'all, keep mixing and be encouraged. Yeah.